Hey everybody, welcome to my house. Come in. about my personal integrity all the time, about my family, about my kids, about my friends. Like if someone wants to get information about me, they can get the information. It's, it's online, they can you know, hack some government institution, they can do whatever they want to find information about me. So I'd rather just live a normal, really relaxed life, be aware of what I do, what I say, what I don't do and so on but you know I don't really care that much if someone wants to look at me when I pick my nose or when I go to the bathroom I don't care you know if they want to see that that's fine so in here I have my my cozy fireplace I have my couch my TV and also my crazy horror movie books so here I mostly just chill out or actually work as well so I love working on the couch So this is my crazy bookshelf where I have all my crazy horror movie books. It's actually quite funny because me and my friends, we watch quite a lot of horror movies and we always fight about you know, which year this movie was released or if, who's the actor or actress or if it's a zombie or just the living dead or you know. The difference between a zombie and the living dead is a zombie should be an individual who likes to eat brain. That's it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's just you know, a person who came back from the dead. It's not the same thing. Totally not. A zombie has to eat brains. Period. So this one, The Art of the Nasty, is actually a book about um, the video nasties. The video nasties was banned movies from the 70s, 80s, and they were banned in the UK. They just have like a big list of you know, different movies that was banned, the artwork, and some information about the book. I'm not an audiophile at all. I just have this thing that when I travel for Kaspersky, when going to different countries and different cities, I try to buy uh, vinyls from every single country that I visit. You know, I want something local. So welcome to my kitchen. Most people think that a kitchen is not very important, but for me, this is actually the most important place for me in the mornings. Because as a hacker, my coffee machine is the only device in the house that will actually keep me alive and walking around. So this is absolutely by far one of the most important places in the house. Kitchen in the kitchen. Fruit salad with cake and Lego. It's like my favorite. Space Invaders, of course, I love this. One of my absolutely favorite games in the entire world. Pew pew stuff, pew pew. A fridge, freezer, washing machine, stove, stove, random stuff. We have the dining room in here, which is actually also full of surprises. So let's go into the dining room. Here in the dining room, I of course sit and eat, but there's also some hidden stuff. So as a movie collector, I actually have movies in every single room. People think that this box is full of diapers. It's not full of diapers. It's full of really cool stuff. This is Betamax. Enough with kitchen and dining room and all that stuff. Let's go to the, uh, the actually the most interesting place. It's my man cave. Let's go. This is where it happens. Bye bye. Cut. Let's remove all these boxes. First of all, when you come in, you have all my retro computers. Not all of them, but the ones that's actually online right now, because this is a bulletin board system. Over here, we have my uh, movie and photo editing machine. I have different boxes around here, like there's a Commodore 64. In this box, there's a ZX Spectrum. And here you have an Amiga 1200. I have two working arcade machines, one with Neo Geo and one with the old retro Space Invaders and all that stuff. The old 80s games. Then over here we have some Commodore games, but also we have the uh, Thunderdome DVDs. It's just for uh, nostalgia. You know? And then down here we have my He-Man book, which is awesome. I fucking love He-Man. He-Man is awesome. And then for some of the other old people looking, 
Do you remember this? The Garbage Pail Kids. This one is quite special, for me at least. It's Bubble Bubble on the Commodore 64 floppy disk edition, which is quite difficult to find. I really love that game. It's like one of my absolute favorite games. This is actually one of the reasons why I actually started to do presentations, because I was so upset when these two journalists posted a list of like the 10 most wanted hackers in Sweden and put my name on it, because I'm not, you know, this criminal guy that actually breaks into systems. So they interpret that as me being a hacker and that actually pissed me off. So I was going to different conferences and talking about this article saying this is not true. You know, we are actually a bunch of people who is doing good, we're not doing bad stuff. The only proof that I have that, you know, I've been in the industry for, oh, 18 years. That's crazy. Long time. It was actually digital snail collecting advice. So this device would uh, go over uh, the Tor network and you know you have tour exit nodes and every exit node actually has a digital snail track so i was collecting the snail tracks for the tour exit nodes and everything started with these types of computers bulletin board systems downloading files downloading tools writing messages to other people about computer security for like two years ago, I decided to see if I can do the same thing again. Can I host these PBS systems, which was usually for uh, modem connections, but can I do the same thing over the internet? So I started to buy all these different machines and I tried to do different adapters to connect these old crap machines to the internet. And now it's actually working. So behind me, there's a Atari available on the internet. You can telnet into this device you know, chat with me, download files or whatever. And then I have this machine here, which is actually running quite a lot of different BBS softwares. This is a Windows BBS running something called Mystic Internet Server. Then on the other side here, we have Renegade BBS, we have Remote Access BBS, and we have PC Board. But we also have a Linux BBS also running. Almost five or six different BBSs running at the same time right now and available over the internet. Let's see if we can call the BBS right now. So I'm going over to my terminal, pretending that I'm a user on the internet. And now you can see here that it's getting an answer. Connect. Brilliant. Bad taste BBS, and I have to log in. So now we're actually connected to an Atari that's available over the internet. It's totally useless. There's nothing you can do. You can you download files, but you can do the same thing over the internet. It's just to keep the BBSs alive. You know, show people that this is actually internet looked when I was a kid. It's the prehistoric internet, you know? I have this project that I always do every summer. I buy old computers that looks terrible and I paint them in different themes, let's say. So I asked my daughter, Linnea, what do you want me to, to do? Dad, let's do one in Hello Kitty. So we have the tape recorder over here, and then we made the normal chassis over here. This mouse is not available right now, but I have this mouse and this keyboard. This is for the PowerPC. This is going to be a PowerPC BBS, and this Commodore 128 is using these different floppy drives, so normal diskettes, but also the typical old floppy disks. It still works. Arcade machines. Come on, let's go. So now it's uh, booting. This is a old classic arcade machine running a JAMA board. It's kind of crazy because you can fit, I have 60 different games like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Space Invaders. All these old classic games is in here. This typical, it's like Space Invaders but on drugs. This is actually my childhood. I actually prefer these games. So now I'm cheating, I'm putting money on here. And remember I told you that Space Invaders was my favorite game? So you're this little spaceship, and you have to shoot all these different aliens that's coming. So if I hold in the button, nothing happens. So I actually have to press the button all the time. <gasps> I died. Oh my god. I died. This is where I have my collection of B horror movie Japanese laser disc movie collection.
normal DVD movies, which is actually in all these cupboards here. There's horror movies in here. So here's some quite limited things like Swedish versions of Django. Yeah, so the thing is I don't really watch these movies, I just collect them because I like the artwork. I used to have my own distribution company. The company that I had released movies in like special collector's editions. Here it is, so here's some of the other movies that we uh, released. A Swedish movie called Ivad uh, Skugga and the Grief, which is limited to 2,000 copies worldwide. We also, this is, was the first movie that we released. It's called Chainsaw Cheerleaders. And I got it signed by uh, Jackie Hall, which is the girl on the front page. So we tried to focus on like the independent movies, independent cinema, and help them get distribution uh, in Europe. <laughs> What's next? Um, we also do a lot of bug bounty stuff. So we decided to create this team where we, um, uh, participate in these bug bounty programs and we meet like four times a year and all the stuff that we uh, all the money that we make from finding these bug bounties will then be donated to charity so I hope people you know get inspiration and do the same so if I would ever make a, a horror movie I would make it in this ghost house it's kind of cool this ghost house So uh, just in front of me, we actually have the official, original, absolute vodka factory. This is the old one. This is where everything started. It's the beginning of absolute vodka. Aarhus ice cream, exactly. This is exactly the reason why I moved here. Because, you know, in Aarhus we have the absolute vodka factory, we have the beach, but we also have one of Sweden's most famous ice creams. It's Aarhus glass. And in here, you know, I mean, you have the boat, the Aarhus boat behind me. A thing where people just come every summer. People travel from all over Sweden to just have the ice cream here. It's very nice. Do you like artificial languages like... Uh, That's language none of your fucking business, okay? Don't ask me those kind of personal questions.